well, thanks for coming, everybody. I hope that you find this uh, as well worth your time. Uh, this is a pretty important uh, pattern that we trade. In fact, like Keith says, it is so important. It's even part of our logo. Let's go through some of this uh, legal stuff first. Basically, this is saying that this is all for educational purposes only. Day trading is is very speculative and a lot of people lose money which means you you have a high chance of losing money too so I uh, just want to make sure that before you ever place any trades with real money you have a lot of confidence and you know what you're doing and you know what you're getting into and don't ever trade with money you can't afford to lose okay all right so uh, yeah you notice our logo there our pullback trading logo it looks an awful lot like the pattern that we trade, and we trade it every day over and over and over again, and it is such a strong pattern that that's all we trade. That's all we need. All right, so these patterns that we trade, we've given them a name of pullback trading, okay? So the reason that we call them pullback is because typically like this, you're going to see a trend. This was an upward trend, right? But inside that trend is a series of pullbacks, and we can anticipate those pullbacks based on how this pattern is setting up for us, okay? So they're really simple. It's really easy to see, but they are largely ignored by most traders, okay? And it's, uh, like I say, it's a really simple plan. We want to see uh, this pattern develop. We want to see some confluence of events. And then we're going to make our decisions on the open of the most current bar. That's, that's where our trading decisions are made. So like I say, it's, it's about as simple as you can get in day trading and have an effective and powerful uh, trading system. So, you know, you maybe you want to know how simple. Well, how simple is a bouncing ball? Okay. Uh, when you know certain things from experience, you can anticipate how a ball is going to bounce, right? Pretty simple. We all have that experience in our life. So if we know certain things, then we have a real good probability of understanding how the ball is going to bounce. So all we need to know is <clears throat> what's the ball made of? What's the density of the material? The, the pressure of the air, the, the height from which the ball is dropped, the energy in the drop, whether we're just dropping it or kind of throwing it or whatever, you know, what's what's the material like that's going to be, that the ball is going to be hitting? Now, this all sounds like a lot, and it really is kind of a lot. There's a lot of data in this to understand what's going on. But for us with experience, we know that there are these characteristics. You can see as the ball drops, all of the characteristics necessary to figure out if the ball will change directions, when it'll change directions, and how much it was likely to change direction. And all of this has been measured, okay? And we know this from experience. When you hold a ball in your hand, you know what to anticipate based on experience. You know, if you're dropping it in sand, you know from experience not to expect much of a bounce off of that ball. Okay? We also know what to expect if we throw it against a, a floor made of concrete and it's all rubber. Okay? We know what to expect. So it's, it's what we're trading is exactly like that. All we have to do is take measurements just before that something specific happens with the trade. 
And and again, we make it as simple as process as possible because it's a process. The qualifying, the conditions for qualifying the trade is a very simple process that we all do every day with decisions that we make every day. So this is nothing new or different, okay? So we're looking for conditions that exist. And, and we want to see if condition one exists, or if it doesn't exist, if we don't have the very first condition, then what do we do? We wait, which is not something it's really easy for a lot of day traders to do. Especially if you've been waiting a while, you start getting kind of antsy. But when you have a, a system and a process to follow, it's a lot easier. So if condition one doesn't exist, we're just going to wait until it does. Then once it does exist, cool. Now we're going to wait for condition two. And if it never exists, guess what? We just wait and it's easy. So there are no shades of gray here with our trading, which is what was killing me in the past when I was struggling, is this indicator kind of sort of said this, and this one kind of sort of said that, and I know all five of these indicators should be saying this, but four of them kind of are. One of them is definitely not saying that, but I can ignore that one because I really need to be in a trade right now because I haven't been in a trade in a while. So this is the kind of stuff that was going on in my head all the time. But now if, if, if this condition doesn't exist, we wait and we just keep going until we finally have, okay, all of the conditions exist, no gray areas. It's a big yes for all of them then we know it's time to execute the trade, okay? So again, I was sweating bullets all the time. Every time I was worried about getting into a trade, and I didn't know for sure with everything I tried, is this the right time? Am I doing the right thing? And of course, I'd have some moderator or somebody telling me, oh yeah, look, it's simple math, of course. Of course, it's easy. Just if you if you understand the basics of what's going on, and and it would be so complicated, I couldn't figure it out. I was still worried about getting into a trade the right way. But here's how we do it. We're just simply looking for a confluence of market conditions. The egg, the those conditions that I say, we're just looking for them to exist. Okay. So here's a typical trading chart. There's no indicators, there's no actionable signals, there's no underlying market information. And if you remember back on Thursday, we talked about how, you know, we need market structure along with trading patterns. You know, I, I talked about how it's so difficult to trade chart patterns and it's almost impossible to just trade chart patterns because there's no underlying market structure to compare them with. Well, that's where this is so totally different. We're actually looking at market structure. And again, we talked about this on Thursday. So we see the market structure actually creates these setups for us. And so what the first thing we're looking for is momentum. We want to see the fact that price has been channeling and then suddenly momentum builds that seems to be out of nowhere for no particular reason. It just starts. And we've all seen it, but we don't know necessarily what we're looking at. So we've got this indicator called our Mometer. So it helps us measure momentum so that we can uh, expect weakness, okay? That's why we want to measure momentum. That's why momentum is so important to us because price never moves in just one direction. You're going to have strong momentum and then periods of pullbacks from that 
and then strong momentum and periods of pullbacks from that. All right. So we want to we want to see the momentum so we can anticipate the exhaustion. We also put in areas of support and resistance so that we can understand that if we have a, a, some strong momentum, if we hit a brick wall and we have exhaustion setting in, how hard is it going to be to get through that brick wall or over it or under it? It's going to be really difficult. So we also have these numbers on the end of our line so that we can anticipate that if price approaches with a lot of momentum, we can anticipate how likely that line is going to, um, uh, or price is going to react to that line, okay? And I'm not going to go through each and every item here. I'm thinking you guys can probably read through this as I'm talking, or if you're watching this on video, you can pause it and you can read through it. So I'm not going to read through each and everything and every characteristics of these indicators um, because, you you know, you may just know that they work. And over time, if you want to know why they work or how they work, then you can read through these things. Okay. Our overbought, oversold indicator. How do you find out if exhaustion is setting in? As soon as price becomes overbought or oversold, this is typically where profits are being taken after a big move. That's why we measure for price being overbought or oversold. It's been being sold for a while or bought for a while. It's driving price hard in a particular direction. And now traders are taking profits. And that's what causes the pullback. Okay. Um, our speed tick. I don't know what happened to that. Our speed tick indicator. This is one of the most important indicators we have. And in fact, it's one of the heads up signals that we get that tells us, okay, it's time to pay real close attention to what happens at the open of the next bar. Okay. That is, this is, we have several heads up indicators and this one, if you see this one, Something is very likely about to happen. So it's very important in qualifying trade setups for us. Our pullback alert, everybody talks about volume, right? And I, and, and I get this question probably once a week. Uh, somebody emails me, how come you guys don't watch volume? And they, I, sh I should have a template for just sending it to people. Um, the pullback alert indicator is measuring volume. But I only want to know about a particular type of volume, not just volume in general, not just how much volume. Everybody looks at that and all the market makers know that everybody looks at that and they play with us based on volume. Okay. They know how to manipulate us by manipulating volume. Yet we're all still staring at volume because we believe it to be important. But only certain types of volume are important. And so our pullback alert is measuring volume, but only the type of volume that we find important in making trade decisions. Okay? Our ricochet indicator, very similar to the uh, speed tick in indicator. In fact, it's a byproduct of the speed tick indicator. But instead of measuring the speed at which uh, price has reached, we're actually measuring acceleration. When, when price accelerates from very slow to very fast, even though it may not reach the same speed of the orders being processed, the acceleration is often a sign of something's about to happen. The acceleration is typically a sign that the, that the algos have now kind of kicked in. Okay. So we want to know when the algos are, are firing off because we always know what happens after the algos. Okay. We don't want to fight the algos. We want to trade after them because there's always a reaction after them. Okay. Our divergence indicator. This was the, the second part of, 
uh, of what ultimately became our our best trade setup. Um, when we started including divergence into our decision making, our our uh, our win weight rate went sky high. Okay, so divergence is extremely important uh, to our trading. And in fact, uh, we have very few trades that we'll take that do not involve divergence. And the rock star. This is everybody's favorite. This is a combination of a number of different indicators that I just talked about. And when there's a confluence of conditions, it will print the rock star on the open of the current bar. So as I mentioned, you know, if we have a bunch of conditions here, I'll show you on the next slide. We have a bunch of conditions that exist here. We're sitting and waiting for the open of this bar. And if this bar prints with a rock star on the open, that tells us it's time to take a trade. And we're going to talk about that. And I'll show you more about that. But with the indicators on your chart, this is what it looks like. We have a confluence of indicators. So it's an agreement amongst mostly non-correlated indicators suggesting that something is about to happen. Okay, Information is coming into the markets right now that uh, tells us that we can expect something specific to happen right now. I mean, what else can you get in day trading? How many more, uh, I don't know, there's no guarantees, but how much closer to guarantees can you get when you have this much information that's coming into the markets right this second on what's likely to happen right this second? Not five minutes from now, 30 minutes from now, an hour, three days, three weeks, right now. That's the best information we have to make decisions about what price is doing right now. So there's two different rock stars. One prints that gold color, or that's the way we have it set. You can set any color you want, but in the trade room, it's, it prints in that gold color. That gold color tells us that it is out, that it is trading further outside the zone which makes it a better potential trade setup. I don't have the zone printed here on this chart, Jeannie, but you'll see a zone in our trade room and you'll see it in a video. I'm, I'm going to pull up a video here in just a minute. Um, there's a zone here. If the rock star prints inside that zone, that tells us that the chances of exhaustion setting in, even though the indicators are there, the chances of, or a high probability of exhaustion is not there. So the ones that print inside the zone have a lower probability of exhaustion, but still the other conditions exist, okay? So in our trade room, we have them print blue, and I trade, I almost don't trade any of the blue rock stars. Most people don't. But the other confluences are there, so they print. And a lot of people buy the Rockstar, and they use it for different things. But the way we use it in the trade room is it prints blue. Now, we could also have it print transparent, and so it doesn't even show up at all. All right? So you can do that if you want to. So that's all that means. Uh, the gold ones are the ones we're typically looking for to take trades. All right, so here's a video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a video of some trades. Let me cover this one. That's just a slide. This is the actual video. Of trades that we take in the trade room every day and what they actually look like on a live chart. Okay? So, first thing I want to point out. The pattern. Okay? I want you not to forget that there's a pattern to this. And it's a simple pattern. What is price doing here? Look at the size of the bars and look what price is doing here. It's channeling and then it starts to drop hard. Kind of slows down, but then drops really hard. All right. That's very important to us. Now, look what's going on here. I didn't talk about this indicator. This is our climactic volume indicator. There's our speed tick. 
We're oversold. That's the blue outline. Remember we talked about the uh, OBOS indicator or overbought, oversold. We've got the pullback alert indicator telling us that we have a particular type of volume coming into the bar that tells us there's a pretty good probability that that bar or, or that price is ready to change directions. Okay? Now, we just wait. And there's the open of the next bar. And now it opened here, but it dropped down here. This is where I'm going to try, this is called a better fill. I'm going to try to get my order in down here, and I'm going to put on a buy order here. If the star prints below, that's a buy order, right? That's because we're, we're thinking price is going to go up, okay? And more times than not, that's what happens, all right? So that, that's a trade. Oh, and here's that zone, Jeannie. This is the zone I was talking about. See how it printed outside the zone? So it printed uh, uh, yellow. Again, price is channeling. It pushes up. We've got a speed tick, but uh, we actually did. This was actually the, this first trade. This is two trades. This trade here was a loser, but we're, we're still watching it because now we're overbought. And we're slamming into this FT line, this resistance. We call it FT because there's a trade set up called First Touch. So these just kind of uh, got this that name of FT or First Touch. Now, this qualifies for what we call a speed tick trade setup. There's no rock star here, but because this bar got overbought and it opened below this line after... First, it has to touch the line, so we have to confirm that this line has value, has resistance, that traders are respecting this line. So as price opened here, we, we shorted it here, and let's see what happens. Price is continuing to test that resistance, but then ultimately drops. All right, so that's showing our support and resistance lines that work there. We want to first confirm that those lines have value to the people that are trading. And the only way to confirm it is to actually see it happen. Sometimes price just drops right through these lines like this. And there's no confirmation that anybody gives a crap about how about these support and resistance lines. So I need confirmation so I want to see price touch it and bounce off of it before I will use it as support or resistance. All right. Price, is, price was channeling here, right? Right here. And then hard drop. It broke out of the channel. There's the channel, right? It, brought, it dropped out of the channel. We're oversold. That's this greenish outline. We've got a speed tick. Pullback alert, and now this bar opened, and that's where our buy order went on. Okay, so we we all the whole trade room bought right there, and I think it went up enough. Yeah, it went up at least five ticks. Now, I could show you this all day long because it's the same thing over and over and over again. And it's been the same thing for 15 years. So you can watch these on our YouTube channel or our videos page if, if you're there, uh, Keith. There's a page on our website that has videos on it and uh, trade of the day videos, which I haven't been making very much of, mostly because there's like 200 of them. And I... They're all, they're just constantly the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> Man, you're fast. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, for, vi for those of you here visiting with us, Keith doesn't work for me. He's just a, just a great guy. He shows up just to help me because I don't have a helper. I'm it. I used to have helpers, but 
they all went on, on their way. My son was the last helper I had, and he has started an extremely successful video production company. And uh, he's having way more fun than working for me. But again, here's here it is, same thing. Over and over. And, and if you guys have any questions about what you're seeing, or why it works, or how it works, or anything, just let me know and I'll explain it for you. All right, so let's keep going. So here it is in short and much easier to see than the live, all right? So we're channeling. Here's the pattern. Price is just kind of drifting around sideways, nothing really happening, and then it busts out of that channel. Remember, we have these two indicators, or these two bars with an indicator on it called a meter. The first thing we want to see is momentum because that helps us anticipate exhaustion. The next thing we see, speed tick, pullback alert, and we're oversold. But do we have a trade here? I talked about this a few minutes ago. Do we have a speed tick trade here? Should I have traded this? Should I have bought here with a speed tick trade? Anybody? Anybody? Who's paying attention? Should I have put on a buy order on the open of this bar? Anybody? No. Because of confirmation. This bar needs to come down, hit this line. It could even trade through the line. As long as it comes back and opens above the line, this bar. This bar did not confirm that we have a potential trade set up. If this bar had hit and then this bar opened down here, we have a trade. But this one, we don't. All right? So now do we have a trade? We have our speed tick. We have a strong uh, potential for exhaustion here. The lighter the color in this bar, the stronger the potential and the more imminent the pullback, the stronger the potential for exhaustion. Then we have the speed tick. Speed tick tells us, hey, this bar is probably being manipulated by the algos. Well, let's wait until the next bar to make our trade decision. We get a rock star on the open of this bar. There's my order. Put on a buy order there, and if you if your timing is good, which with a little practice, your timing could get really good, and you'll hear me say it in the trade room all the time. You know, I'll be telling people, this is the way it sounds in the trade room. Okay, we broke out of the channel. I'm watching whatever this is. Let's say it's the CL. I'm watching the CL, um, and I'll do that when I'm doing this, and I say, okay, I'm waiting for the order open of the next bar to make my trade decision and because I on this bar, I was looking for a rock star because I knew I couldn't do a speed tick trade because it didn't confirm by coming down here and touching. I don't need confirmation for a rock star trade, okay? Only for a speed tick trade. Most of our trades are rock star or naked rock star. This particular trade would be called a naked rock star because it doesn't have the, res the support behind it. If I had that line here, then it would just be a rock star trade. Naked rock stars, uh, you need a little bit more confluence if you don't have the support, okay? So there's just a few rules you have to learn to trade this, but the rules are the rules. They're black and white. There's no gray areas. There's no kind of sort of, all right? So when I place a trade in the room and I say, okay, if this bar opens, uh, if this next bar opens with a rock star, I'm going to trade it. I'm going to buy it. That's what I tell people before this bar opens. Now, when it opens, if it just sits there, I put in my order. But as it's opening, now I'm fast, but I'm not reckless. I'm very deliberate with my trades. I first have to see what's going on. Then I have to go put the trade on. And by that time, price may have dropped down here. And I put on my buy order down here. That's even better than here. 
we have a lot of opportunities to get better fills on a buy. On a buy. It doesn't have to be right at this, uh, at this price. It can be down here. So that's a better fill. And typically, uh, uh, we'll get that, you know, and, and it'll just be a kind of a quick pullback. We're only expecting a quick pullback, not a reversal. It could be a reversal. I don't know. And then price just continues channeling. Um, Mike, some people wait and some people... Uh, do it on the or, on the open of the bar. I don't have any issue with either one. The only thing that you have to recognize is you will trade fewer trades. If you wait, then you'll get fewer trade setups. But a lot of people are fine with that. It really depends on your style and what you want to do. If you want to get this immediately on the open of the bar and you want to only take it on the open of the, the bar, fine. We have traders, successful traders, that have, uh, they want to wait like five or 10 seconds before they consider whether to put the trade on. Well, if this bar opened and jumped straight to target, they missed an opportunity. That's okay. There's more. No problem. But if they wait five or 10 seconds and price drops down here, then they got a better fill. That's okay. So it really is up to you. And what happens is, is we have a, a really good uh, way to train, uh, to train yourself to practice. You want to practice and practice a lot. And you, this is how you gain experience. This is how you get good at anything. You practice. So we're going to you're going to start practicing and you'll practice getting filled at the open of the bar or getting filled or waiting for 10 seconds or whatever and then you find what works best for you. So you do not have to be fast at all. And that's I think that's a good point that we need to make that a lot of people maybe steer away from what we're doing because they get intimidated because they think you have to be so fast. You do not have to be fast. You do have to be deliberate. You do have to know and understand what it is that you're seeing on the open of the bar and if it qualifies for a trade setup. And you have to be 100% confident that it is a trade setup before you enter that trade, okay? So that's where the practice comes in. That's where the execution and getting experience. That you build confidence. You earn confidence. Yes, we only use time-based charts. The other charts don't make any sense to me because removing time, uh, everybody uses time. Time is part of the real world. Um, time is v definitely a big part of, de of trading. And to remove time doesn't really make sense to me since it, it's very, very important uh, in trading. Price is not the only thing. Time is very important, particularly as it relates to how the algos are working. Okay, So uh, I don't understand or like other charts. I know people, other people like to try to use them because they make really pretty charts. Um. So it, 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 it makes your screen look more, I don't know, uh, less noise. I think that's the, that's the, the issue is, is uh, what people call noise. And I don't call time noise. It's all important information to me. See, a lot of people that don't use time charts won't see the pattern. The pattern, we want to see when price is channeling and we want to see when it breaks out of that channel. Well, if you used a Rinko or some other chart, what are you going to see here? You're going to have probably one bar. Well, you don't really see price channeling, do you? 
So there goes that advantage that we have. We have an advantage when we know price is breaking out of a channel that's been going on for quite a while, right? Or at least several bars, several minutes. If you have one Rinko bar there, you don't really know how long that bar's been there. So it's much more difficult to trade if you don't use a time-based chart. But here's the pattern, okay? We're going to come up with a name for this pattern, by the way. Um, we talked about it in the trade room. I think we have a good one. Um, so, uh, TJ came up with uh, finger fade, and I'll show you uh, some other time. We'll show you why it's because this looks like a hand with a knuckles and then a finger sticking up, the like number one. And then the, the fade part is when price comes up, hits the resistance, we get a rock star, and then it drops. So you got the finger and then it fades off of that. So kind of thinking maybe that's it. If you guys think of a good name for this particular pattern, send it to us. We're, we're going to come up with a name for it and like some good suggestions. Okay, so here's the, here, and that's a great question, Gary. So here's the thing. Remember, we have a, right now we have an upward trend, don't we? An upward bias. And this is all, this, ans this part uh, answers your question. So our expectation is like everybody else, and that is that the trend is going to continue after a pullback. So our expectation here is not a reversal. Our expectation here is that price is going to pull back while people take some profits. And then the trend is going to continue. So since we're only looking for a pullback uh, of a few ticks, now, we don't know. We have no information to tell us whether it's going to be a, a big pullback, a small pullback, a reversal, we have no idea. All we know is this is highly probable right here. This, this, this much of a pullback is very probable. So we're going in for a five tick target and we're willing to risk a seven tick stop for that. But... Our stops will change if the conditions that got us into the trade change. For example, and I don't uh, have it here, but let's say I put on a buy order here. Although this, let's pretend this is a shorter bar. I put on a buy order and then price just kind of drifts sideways. It doesn't really do much. And I'm still in this trade. I'm going to shorten my stop. And I'm going to shorten it, and I'm going to keep shortening it to the point where maybe I can get out at break even or plus one. I never, I never remove my target because price can always go, still go to target. I'm always going to manage my trade with my stop. So even though I may take a loser on a trade, and I'll call it a loser, it may, instead of being seven ticks, it may only be two or three ticks because of the way the trade was managed. Okay, now we've been doing this for a long time. I think we're, we're probably one of the best kept secrets on the internet as it relates to trading. We've won awards. We've been doing this same thing for 15 years. And again, it's simple, isn't it? Here's the pattern. It's the pattern. Price is channeling. Nothing much happening. We talked about what's likely happening here. This is probably... Uh, an area of accumulation or, or distribution. That's what's going on here. And then price busts out of this channel. We see strong momentum. We get we see that the algos are probably firing off here and that we have a particular type of volume that we're looking for where we can anticipate that price is about to change directions. And we know that exhaustion is setting in because we're overbought. Okay? open of this bar, this bar opens, but it kept going up. This is probably where we got filled and down it goes. So what do we have? We have an agreement of conditions in the market that something is about to change. 
we have moment we have channeling then we have momentum then we have our speed tick then we have our overbought then we have our uh, volume that is churning meaning that the buyers were in control but the sellers are now fighting with the buyers the sellers have come in that's what's going on on the pullback alert and then we have a rock star on the open of the current bar which tells us that not only is price moving up hard and fast and likely exhausted but this also factors in the the, the divergence which tells us yeah price is going this way but momentum has already changed directions and what happens when when uh, price and momentum disagree price will try to catch up with momentum okay again this is a, a simple qualifying process Price is channeling. If price is not channeling, or, or if it's channeling and, and there's no breakout, then we wait. If we get a strong move after the breakout of the channel, or if we don't, we wait. If we do, now we're going to look for, okay, do we have a strong potential for exhaustion? If we do, or if we don't, we wait. If we do, now we start looking for signs that the algos are firing off, that the, that the market at this instant is being manipulated to create a reaction. So this is where they want to take their profits, right? If it's not manipulated, you just wait. If it is, now. Do we have support or resistance? Well, it, if, if not, then now we have another question. Does it qualify as a naked rock star tra uh, uh, trade setup? Uh, one minute. So we're looking for that support or resistance. If it doesn't qualify for a naked uh, rock star trade that I showed you earlier, then we wait. If it does, then it's time to execute a trade. That's how clear and concise our trade setups are. And there's no gray areas and there's no wondering what you're supposed to do, which creates a much less stressful trading environment. We don't know if the trade's going to win or lose. Because even though we have all of this information, the markets are going to do what they're going to do. But we do know that we've removed some of the anxiety that comes with trading because you made the best decision you could with the information that you had at the time. And if it goes against you, you were still right to take that trade. You did nothing wrong. That's a lot of traders think, oh, I lost the trade. What did I do wrong? How could I have avoided that loss? If you're spending your time trying to avoid losses in trading, you're going to have a very hard time in trading. I have lost millions of dollars day trading. In fact, I'm going to do a webinar on that sometime millions of dollars I've lost day trading. But I've won a little bit more than that. And that little bit more is how I make my living. You have to get okay with losses because it's part of the job. Okay? So when you're okay with it and you, you can see that you're making positive uh, traction in your trading account, even though you take losses sometimes, trading starts getting a lot less stressful. Okay? Uh, Jeannie, it, it's funny because it, it oh, from month to month and year to year, it changes. I don't know if you remember, but I used to never trade the ES. Ever. And now I trade it all the time. The CL used to be my favorite instrument to trade. And now it's probably my least favorite, although I'll still trade it. 
So it changes over time. Okay? It changes. That's why we don't just give up on an instrument most of the time. We just kind of set it aside, keep watching it, and then when things change a little bit, it, and it comes back around, and we start trading it again. All right, so characteristics of our pullback trading, uh, you know, this pattern. We trade pullbacks from a breakout, not the breakout, okay? We don't trade the breakout. You'll get run over that way. We trade after the breakout. Buying the pullback of the black candle. Uh, I'm not sure, Chris. We can talk about that. Ask me again at the end. I'm not sure I know what you mean. Usually the black candle is, there's not a, enough potential for exhaustion when it's black. I'm looking for a gray or almost white color because I want a stronger uh, a potential for exhaustion. Also, those black candles are often still inside the naked rock star zone. All right? So we're, we're measuring strength. That's our, our Mo meter, our speed tick, our ricochet. We're measuring strength so that we can anticipate weakness. That's, that's what we're all about. That's it. So we need to identify the market manipulations so that we can anticipate the reactions to those manipulations because us traders do the same thing every time. So we want to reduce our exposure, meaning we want to get in and out of a trade quickly. Where's the worst place? for your, the money in your trading account to be as a trader? What's, where's the worst place for it to be? In the markets, right? Because it can get taken from you. If it's not in the markets, then nobody can take it. So we want to get in and out as quickly as possible to make our trades less speculative, meaning that that conditions can't change, and now you've got to try to figure out how to get out of this trade, or if you should get out of this trade, because the conditions that got you into the trade really aren't there anymore. Yet you're in this trade where you're supposed to wait another 30 minutes or an hour or whatever to see if it finally gets to your target. Now, we, we, I was really, really bad at managing emotions. I was really bad at it. And I'm, I'm really no better at it now. So what I did is I came up with a way to, uh, or a system, so that I didn't really have to manage my emotions that much. Right? It's, it's an, or at all now, when I first came up with it, this really helped. I said, okay, I'm, I suck at managing my emotions. What else can I do? Well, the, the, mo the more I'm out of a trade, the less emotions I'm having to deal with. Okay, so we have very limited losses because of our rules on how we manage losses and how many losses we're going to take before we stop trading with real money and then just continue trading in SIM. So we focus on maximizing our execution and trade management, which means what? Practice, practice, and practice some more. The great thing is, we have for 15 years exhibited an extremely strong edge. You see it all the time. You can go look at any chart, look at the pattern. You're going to see we have a strong edge. But in order to exploit that edge, you have to practice and get good. You have to build the skill of trading. We talked about that. As you're working on that, you're going to not only develop skills, you're going to develop your own style. You look at driving a car, okay? We all think that's pretty simple now, don't we? Because we've been doing it a long time, but if you think about the number of things you're doing when you drive a car and you write it all down, it would seem kind of overwhelming, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it, and that's exactly what it is. This is common sense. 
There's no smoke and mirrors to this, which is why I'm so eager to explain to people what is happening and why this works. There are 95% of the trading systems out there are just saying, hey, if you use all these wavy lines and you use all this other stuff and if you get all these other indicators, then take a trade. And, you, and that's what I tried to do for so long. So we only we only shorten stops. We don't we never mark it out because you're you're going to take potential. You could have a potential winner, and you're going to probably take some slippage on it that you don't really need to take. So I like this is this is ready aim fire. That's what I mean. Common sense. This isn't ready fire aim, or fire ready aim, which is what I used to do all the time. I'd I'd fire and then I'd go, oh. Wait, I didn't notice this indicator or this tool or this whatever said I really shouldn't take that trade. But now that I'm in the trade, let's just see what happens. I, I mean, am I the only one that does that or used to do that? Get into a trade, you realize you're not supposed to be in that trade, and you go, eh, I'm in it. Maybe I'll win. Well, only one thing can happen. <laughs> oh, no, one of two things can happen. You win or lose. And they're both bad. Because if you lose, of course, you feel like an idiot. If you win, you're emboldened now to go, eh, rules don't really matter that much. Look at me. I have special skills. I have powers. I don't need rules. <laughs> so when you win trades that you shouldn't win by luck, it's really not a good thing because you, you, I mean, I feel guilty and I do it. I do it. I still do it. I get called out in the trade room sometimes when I enter a trade and they go, hey, well, what about this rule? And I go, no, oh. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to enter that trade, but I did it, you know, so I make mistakes and, and you just, then you just hope you get lucky, but I still feel stupid. I'm not supposed to be making those mistakes, but sometimes I do. So yeah, we use one minute charts. And we just trade futures in our trade room, but we have a lot of Forex traders that like to use our system also. Um, and like we talked about, five tick target, seven tick stop. All right, so now only five ticks. What? I know. I said five ticks, right? Well, how the heck are you guys supposed to make money at five ticks? I mean, who can make any money at five ticks? What about fees and commissions? Won't that eat it up? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Once you get good at this and you start adding lots to your trade, you don't do anything different. Just keep trading the same way. But you grow your account a little bit, add another lot to your trade, and do the same thing. It can grow pretty quickly, and, and Keith was nice enough to share this, this page. If you want to really know how it goes, go look at our trade room results. This is uh, four, four, last four or five years or something. Um, this is, uh, we got another nice guy in the room, Marshall. Used to be a budget analyst for a major corporation, and uh, now he's a trader, and, and he keeps these results for us and uh, and audits the trade room results and sends these audits to me quarterly. I post them yearly, but he sends me these quarterly audits on how the trade room is doing. I don't keep up with it, but he does. So you can see all of uh, Marshall's stuff uh, on this page on our audited results. And and we basically it hasn't changed maybe one or two points over the last several years so i don't know what else anybody needs uh unless you just want to see more we saw enough of those um but simple is easy you know it just takes you just got to do the work you got to dedicate time every day to practice you can learn how to practice using our fast forward training come hang out in the trade room uh we got the trade room videos, right? So we have a lot of people that can't come to the trade room because of their time zone or they have to work or whatever. So instead of coming to the trade room, they rewatch the day's trading on our uh, 
videos. We record every single minute of every trade room, every day in the trade room, and then we make that available for our pro trader members. Okay, we have a mentoring program. We have training videos. You get um, live support. I spent half my day yesterday helping people with things that were not <laughs> were not issues with our stuff. They were having computer issues. They didn't know where to turn. I happened to know some stuff, and so they asked me, and I did a remote support, and I helped them. You know, these are the people that are in our pro trader program. So if you're having issues, we'd love to help. We just want to get you back up and running and able to practice your trading and then trade with us. Okay. So uh, we have uh, uh, group meetings uh, every day when we're in the trade room. So come join us, hang out with us, you know, let us help you. And like you said, this is common sense stuff. This isn't smoke and mirrors stuff and these big secrets. You know, everybody, I, I get these emails from other marketers that are saying, finally release the big secret to our day trading and these big secrets and these finally, uh, that's a bunch of crap. I've been doing this 15 years and telling everybody about it for 15 years and there's no big secret. There is a particular thing that happens all the time and it happens for a reason and you want to know what the reason is, go back and look at Thursday's event. It happens all the time. It happens every day. It happens on every instrument. The more liquid the instrument, the better. The better you are at looking at the charts and finding the patterns, they'll start jumping at you. And you'll think, well, this is ridiculous. How did I miss this all this time? It's been right there in front of me. Okay. Uh, the list of trading parameters. Uh, well, I'm not sure it was parameters, but let me see which list that was. That one? Yeah, you want to do a quick screenshot of that. Uh, there's, there's more to it than just that, but that kind of helps you get a general idea of, of where we're at. So we've got a big uh, special for you guys. Uh, appreciate you spending time with us here on uh, your weekend. It's a valuable time, I know. A lot of good football games today. I plan on participating in that. Um, but we've got, uh, you know, enter this coupon code right here at checkout. There's, here's our... our uh, our store on our website, you go to checkout, um, and uh, go ahead and get started with us, and let us know how we can help you. Now, our Pro Trader program, if you want to get in, started with us with that, I will remotely connect to your computer and set it all up for you, so you don't have to do anything. As long as you have Ninja Trader on your computer and a data feed, that's all you need. I'll set it all up for you and get you all ready to trade. So uh, a lot of our traders take advantage of that. And in fact, if you're in the Pro Trader program, whenever you change computers, I'll come fix it. Uh, the, I'll move everything to the new computer for you. Or you're having problems with your current computer, I'll, I'll help you try to fix that. Even if it has nothing to do with our stuff, that's kind of what we do. Because a lot of our traders are not necessarily tech people. They're not real comfortable with computers. So they like coming in and trading with us because they have that level of comfort that if they're not good with computers, at least there's somebody out there who understands what they're doing, knows Ninja Trader, knows computers, and, and has I've been like I said, I've been at this for 15 years. I've gotten pretty good at it. So we're always happy to help you. Okay. Any questions? I know Keith's been doing an outstanding job. Yep. Keith's been doing an outstanding bet way better than I would do. <laughs> I don't know if what I'd do without you now, Keith.